Hello and welcome to this week's YouTube video. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this realistic black cat using Procreate. I'll then briefly show you the printing process as well as the printer I used to turn my digital artwork into fine art Gickley prints. I am using a Generation 2 Apple Pencil with Procreate. Before we started, I wanted to make an important point about doing art on your iPad. If you intend to print it, remember that the screen is backlit and your prints will not be. So to avoid the issue of really dark prints, you need to put your iPad screen onto half brightness, just like this. This will ensure that you end up with something that resembles your digital file. I'm going to assume that you are familiar with Procreate. If you are not, then have a look at this video that goes over the basics in 10 minutes. I'm going to do this cat exactly as if I were painting it in oils. Procreate has lots of really great functions and special effects. I have to confess, I do not use them. I'm basically sticking with a few layers, a few brushes, erase and paint. So let's get started then and I will talk you through what I am doing as we go along. For the background, I work on multiple layers. In total, I have 12 separate layers for this background. This is because it is difficult to work in texture. So by having multiple layers, you can vary the opacity and rub out sections of your current layer in order to allow the underneath layers to show through. This is all that I am doing here. I am using a variety of brushes on the background. I try to use brushes that all make different marks to again create interest and texture. I start off with covering the canvas in one colour using a soft brush in the airbrushing section. I then use the following brushes to create texture. Wet sponge, mad splash found in the water section and the stucco found in the painting section. I also use the stucco brush as a rubber as it takes the layer off leaving texture. I am using different opacities and also working with the complementaries of orange and blue in various transparencies. I paint the cat on two layers. I do the eyes on one separate layer and then the whole cat on another layer. Having the eyes on a separate layer works well because it allows me to be quite expressive with my cat's fur and not have to worry about losing fine detail. For the eyes, I use a combination of brushes. These are stucco, turpentine brush found in the painting section and also oil rich brush. I imported this one from Photoshop. It is one of Kyle T. Webster's found in the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. For my colour selection, I have used greens, yellows and oranges. For the cat's main body, I started using my turpentine brush and just lay a mid-brown from the orange colours. This is how I would paint a black cat in oils because many black cats have an underlying orange to their black fur. I then use a combination of three brushes to paint this cat. Oil rich, stucco and turpentine. For my darkest blacks, I am selecting a black from my oranges. For the midtones, I am selecting a lighter black from my blues. And for the lighter areas of the cat's fur, I am selecting a grey from my oranges. So I am working with those complementaries again, orange and blue, but varying my temperatures between warm, cool, warm, just as I would if I were painting. As I move on to the cat's main body, I introduce areas of stronger brown using my turpentine brush. I am interchanging between the solid mark making of the oil rich brush and the much more wet on wet effect of the turpentine brush. It really depends what I am trying to achieve. It's the same colour selection apart from the tail where I have strayed into my cooler purples and violets. That's what helps give the tail contrast against the warmth of the cat's back end. I'm keeping my edges soft as well by using the turpentine brush around the edge of the cat. The shadow is a combination of the turpentine brush and then I'm using the wash brush over the top to soften my colours. 
I've decided at this point the background needs a bit more work, so I have introduced the pencil just to make some different marks in the left hand area. I've also introduced more of a deeper orange on the right hand side using the wash brush. The whiskers are done using a pencil tool. So once I'm happy with it, I will print a tester just to see how the colours come out. So here we are now in Photoshop. Sometimes I do need to lighten my artwork a little and I will do this in Photoshop using the adjustments panel. I would use a levels adjustment just like this, lightening one end to around 245. That's usually enough. The right slider adjusts only the light areas and as I said before this is usually enough to brighten up a slightly dark image. The middle slider will lighten up the mid-tones but you need to be really careful using this one as it can really wash out your image if you go too far with it. But the image is fine so I won't be adjusting today. I am going to print this image now straight from Photoshop. I allow Photoshop to control my colours as I find doing it this way I get minimal colour shifts. The profile setting I use is Epson sRGB. You can get profiles specifically for different papers but I find this one works fine. The printer I am using is an Epson SC900 and here it comes and that's it. iPad drawing to printed image in 7 minutes. I hope you are inspired to give drawing a go on your iPad. I hope you have found today's video useful. Please like and subscribe if you can and check out my website sarahhallidayart.com where you will find examples of my work and also details on the classes that I run. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.